Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining me on the first ever Livestock Extension Group Virtual Field Day. This virtual field day has been brought to you by the University of Hawaii at Manoa's Cooperative Extension Service. My name is Savannah Katulski and I am the Livestock Extension Agent for Kauai County. And my topic for this presentation is going to focus on some recommendations for shipping livestock in our island. Now, before I get started in this presentation, I do want to point out that if you ever have questions relating to ocean transport or any form of transport of livestock, that you reach out to your appropriate extension faculty, such as a county-based ag agent or an extension specialist. You reach out to your appropriate livestock association or you reach out to the appropriate shipping company, such as Young Brothers. Before we even get started on talking about all the regulations and recommendations for ocean transport of livestock, I think it's really important to bring us back to the start and remember the core values of food production. And remember that as livestock producers, um, whether we're ranchers, whether we're shippers, whether we're an extension agent, um, that it's our job to provide the following core values uh, to help with food security and sustainability, as well as food safety. So first is gonna be the safety of our food production system. The second is going to be that uh, food production and our food is healthy, it is nutritious, we are caring for the welfare of animals, and of course, that it is sustainable. And that means, environmentally, socially, and economically sustainable. For this uh, presentation, we are going to have four learning objectives. The first is going to be focused on animal welfare. The second is going to be focused on biosecurity. Third, environmental protection. And last but certainly not least is going to be personnel safety. Just to reiterate what I just talked about, we just want to keep in mind that when we're talking about the transportation of livestock in Hawaii, and this doesn't just apply to ocean transport, but all movement of livestock, is that the safety of the people handling those livestock, the livestock and animals themselves, and of course the environment is the top priority when we're transporting animals. Bottom line is when transporting livestock in Hawaii or anywhere, the first thing you need to maintain is good stockmanship, and that is going to be important whether you're transporting animals or not, but making sure that these animals have a good ground that they can stand on uh, prior to any form of high stress situation like uh, transportation uh, that requires good stockmanship, um, good uh, animal caretaking, and good animal husbandry. As mentioned in the overview, our first topic is going to focus on animal welfare. So the first topic relating to animal welfare that I wanna begin with is preconditioning and animal selection. Some general points I want to make are one, that we should be preconditioning these animals for their destination. Um, that could be somewhere that's super arid or super wet and making sure that these animals are prepared for their future environment. That also might include vaccinating or deworming these animals, depending on the production phase that they are in. And so that is something that should be worked out between the shipper and the receiver and or buyer. Secondly, when selecting for animals that should be shipped, you should never ship depressed, sick, or injured livestock. Young animals should also be completely weaned, so we don't want to have bawling calves uh, on the containers. And then lastly, avoid shipping feral or wild animals. Um, I know animals tend to act differently on the ranch than they do at the pier or in the container, but avoid shipping those super high-headed uh, or wild animals to minimize any form of injuries that could happen to either personnel or animals. Without getting into too much detail on the recommendations for the various species that you're going to be transporting in terms of preconditioning and animal selection, I'm just gonna go over some brief general recommendations. For cattle, sheep, and goats, we recommend that they are weaned and castrated as well as vaccinated and treated for parasites 30 days prior. Uh, we wanna make sure that these ruminant animals are adjusted to their future environment, especially from a dietary standpoint. Then the, even more so for sheep and goats, if they're being 
transported from maybe a very arid or dry area to a very wet area and just making sure you're giving these animals as much um, tools in their toolbox that they need to adjust smoothly to their transition as well as during the transportation process. And then many of these recommendations are similar for llamas and pacas, alpacas. When it comes to pigs, we want to make sure that the animals that are being shipped are grouped together a few days before shipping just to minimize any fighting that might occur. Uh, we want that to get out of their system uh, prior to shipping. And then it's recommended that pigs are treated for internal and external parasites prior to transport. And then lastly for horses, uh, we recommend that horses are halter broke and accustomed to trailer transport and they're just generally well tempered in a confined situation. We understand that all animals are going to act differently at their home ranch than they would um, at the pier or during a high stress situation like transportation, but it is good to try to get these animals used to an, a human contact and handling prior to uh, the actual transportation. In addition to just general on the ranch, guidelines and recommendations before transport. There are also some paperwork things that need to be taken care of and you can find out more details on this by contacting the transportation company uh, that you're going to be using, your county extension agent or the Hawaii Department of Agriculture. Uh, the big two forms to know about when transporting animals in our island is a DC-44 form and that is the form here in the bottom right corner of the slide. And that is required for all animals that will be transported in our island. It asks information such as the owner, uh, the receiver, the origin and the destination, the species, uh, some brands or uh, specific identifiers for the animals, and requires you to sign and turn this form into the Hawaii Department of Ag within 10 days of transport. The second form is a DC-8 form. And this is a form that's mostly used for uh, sheep and goats due to the scrapie program and pigs that are going to Kauai. This form is required as a permit to ship these animals due to biosecurity reasons. And I'll discuss that briefly in the biosecurity section as well. Transportation as a whole can be a very high stress time for livestock but the most stressful time during that is going to be during the unloading and the loading process. So it's important to make sure that you're using low stress handling techniques whenever you are loading, unloading, or just handling livestock in general. The big thing to make sure is that there's no large gaps or major floor level changes between the chutes and or ramps uh, to the shipping device or truck and trailer. Uh, we recommend that anyone who's handling livestock complete a quality assurance training, such as PQA Plus, Beef Quality Assurance, or the American Sheep Industry Quality Assurance. Specifically for swine or pigs, we want to make sure that, again, we are avoiding any floor level changes or gaps. And then we want to make sure that the destination is well lit. So whether that's opening the windows on the trailer or hanging a light in the receiving area if you're in a barn. Um, animals tend to like to move into a lit area versus a dark area. And so that will make the loading and unloading not only easier for you, but also lower stress for the pigs. Some equipment that is recommended is sorting boards, a rattle or a shaker or uh, flags. We recommend that you avoid using electrical prods as much as possible. Um, those should only be used as a last resort. And it is recommended to move market pigs in groups of three to five and to try to ship pigs that are of similar size and production phase. This is especially important for moving sows and boars that they should be uh, moved individually. In terms of cattle, sheep and goats, it's very similar to pigs in that we want the destination to be well lit. We also want to avoid shadows or extreme gradient changes. So in order to do this, some of the common systems that are used are a snake shoe, a bud box, and then a good corral system. Flags, rattle paddles, or shakers, and horses and ATVs are useful tools when rounding up and loading cattle, sheep, and goats. And again, we recommend 
that you avoid using electrical prods um, as a, until it's a last resort. Moving cattle, sheep, and goats is a bit of an art, and it it, it, it requires, excuse me, um, an understanding of the point of balance and flight zones. So understanding where you need to stand and how you need to move in order to manipulate the direction that these animals are moving. There's no reason for vocalization and yelling. Um, minimize that as much as possible and work with your strong understanding of balance and flight zones. And again, that BQA and PQA quality assurance training goes over in pretty good detail flight zones, point of balance, and how to work and move uh, livestock in an efficient manner. Here are some examples of some of the on-farm facilities or on-ranch facilities that can be used when unloading and loading livestock. Uh, the first two pictures on the right um, are uh, solid walled, which makes it a little bit easier for moving animals. This top left one is uh, from for sheep and goats. And then this bottom left one is um, a, a portable system that can be uh, set up in the field for, for loading cattle directly onto a truck. Um, and then the same thing on the right. Many places might have permanent uh, corrals and chutes set up for loading onto trucks. The following slides are going to be transportation space requirements. Uh, there's no need to copy these down or memorize them. All of this information can be found in the transportation uh, guidelines checklist that is on the Hawaii Cattlemen's Council website. And I will provide a link to that website at the very end of this presentation. But the most important thing to pay attention to is the three columns on the left, and that is average body weight, the square footage needed per animal, and then general height recommendations. The three, the three columns on the right are for containers, and I know many of you uh, will be shipping in alternative shipping devices, such as trailers or box stalls, etc. So these are great if you're shipping in a typical container, but the same calculations can be determined based on how much space is needed per animal. Similarly for sheep and goats, there's a square footage uh, requirement for the sheep and goats. Cattle as well, many of you shipping cattle are, unless you're shipping one-off bulls or heifers or uh, cows or something of that nature, you're going to be shipping in 20 or 40 foot containers. And so this table is really helpful um, to use as a uh, reference whenever you're determining um, your load capacity within the trailers. And then lastly, briefly touching base on horses, the square footage requirement or recommendation for horses is 20 square foot per head. That is regardless of average body weight. And I know many of you are not going to be shipping in 20 or 40 foot containers, but um, they can fit about seven horses in a 20 foot container and 14 in a 40 foot container. But when you are using some sort of trailer or box stall, just uh, keep in mind to try to allow 20 feet, 20 square feet, excuse me, per uh, horse. Providing feed and water will not apply to many of you, especially if you are shipping livestock and the transit is less than 24 hours. But in the event that the transit takes more than 24 hours, whether that be from a transit delay or because your destination requires multi-leg shipments, such as a stop on Oahu, it is important to make sure that your container or shipping device is equipped with the ability to provide water to the animals and that you have an appropriate way to provide feed to them. The best practice is to have the container moved from the pier and housed at some sort of isolation facility without contact with other animals. Now this could be another ranch, another farm, etc. but it is important to make sure that these animals are isolated, especially from a biosecurity standpoint. Lastly, just to note that all of these arrangements need to be made by the shipper and or the owner, and it is not the responsibility of the shipping company to arrange for the animals to be checked on and fed and watered. Just a brief reminder on prepping and inspecting shipping devices, this should be done all year long. 
and be sure to inspect the devices for any uh, issues of rust, broken waters or water lines, feed bin function if the, your shipping device is equipped with that, all of the window latches, door latches, hinges, um, all of those things, making sure there's no sharp edges so that animals can't get injured, and make sure that those repairs are being made prior to booking some sort of shipping. Be sure to connect any water lines for waterers if your shipping device is equipped with that. And then lastly, cleanliness is very important. I will hammer this more on the biosecurity section, but make sure it is clean, that the flooring is non-slip, and that you have added bedding. This slide outlines some general shipping device guidelines. This has been condensed down from the Inner Island Shipping Guidelines checklist that I mentioned before that can be found on the HCC's website. But gen generally trailers, 20 or 40 foot containers, as well as shipping pens can be used. These shipping devices must have four sides, uh, forklift pockets so that they can be easily moved at the pier. They must be leak proof up to at least two inches. This has been changed from the previous requirement. It used to be five and a half inches, I believe. There needs to be bedding and non-slip floors. It must be sturdy and escape proof. And lastly, it needs to have some sort of water supply in case of transit delays or multi-leg shipments. All right, now that sums up our discussion on animal welfare. Next, we're going to be talking about biosecurity. When discussing biosecurity, the definition of biosecurity is any procedure or plan that is put in place that is there to protect either the animals or the humans against some sort of harmful disease or agent. This is especially important in Hawaii due to the fact that each of the islands have a unique ecosystem and also because of Hawaii's unique ecosystem as a whole. These different biosecurity practices are put in place to protect the animals and humans from diseases from animals, diseases to plants, and any invasive pests and plants. General recommendations for biosecurity is that first and foremost, you have a VCPR or a veterinary client patient relationship. This is just to make sure that the vet is aware of your herd health status. It can assist you in case anything comes up, especially prior to or during transit. Secondly, we wanna make sure that we're not shipping any sick or unthrifty animals, especially pay attention to fever and respiratory symptoms because those are typically symptoms that are associated with some sort of uh, contagious disease. Third, we need to make sure that you know the health history of not only where these animals are coming from, but also where they are going. We do not wanna be shipping sick animals to a healthy herd or healthy animals to a sick herd. Next, a general recommendation is to vaccinate deworm or do any treatments that you need to on the animals more than 30 days before shipping. This is mostly a recommendation to make sure that you can observe for any adverse reactions to the medications prior to shipping so that something doesn't occur during transit. In addition to doing all of these treatments 30 days before, any uncompleted drug withdrawal periods should be communicated to the receiver and or the consigner on these animals. And then lastly is just to be clean. Um, diseases and invasive pests are spread through soil manure, uh, obviously nose to nose contact, but also your feed and your forages and then on equipment. So be sure that you are thoroughly cleaning and sanitizing all of your facilities and equipment between shipping. Going into more species specific diseases that you can be aware of um, and just general recommendations. The first is pigs and it's especially important to make sure that you're avoiding spreading any diseases in our island because some of the islands are free of PERS, PEDV or circovirus. The pigs should be isolated 30 days after arrival. And the island of Kauai is protected by a Department of Ag quarantine. So all pigs that are going to be shipped to Kauai need to be testing negative for PERS prior to shipping. And that's where that DC-8 form comes in, in handy. Looking at cattle, there are no requirements in terms of testing for shipping 
cattle in our island, but it is important to monitor the animals for any signs of disease and be sure that they are healthy prior to shipping. Some of the diseases that can be monitored are IBR, BVD, and BLV, basically the respiratory disease complex. Uh, yonis, trichomoniasis, commonly known as trick, which is a venereal disease. And then just pay attention to internal and external parasites. That'll be especially important uh, just looking at animal body condition and general th thriftiness. It is important, again, that the producer and receiver or buyer communicate about herd health practices prior to shipping so that the herd health status has been communicated to, by both parties. Similarly, when horses, we want to make sure that you are observing the horses prior to shipping for certain symptoms, such as symptoms of respiratory disease, which will include coughing and any discharge from the nose and eyes strangles and pigeon fever. Again, none of this needs to be tested for prior to shipping, but it is important to make sure you're observing the animals and making sure that they're not demonstrating any of the symptoms of these diseases prior to shipping. It is also important to inspect feed, forage, and all the equipment. Especially important to look for the two-line spittle bug right now. It is currently a very invasive pest on the Big Island, and we want to make sure that that pest is not being uh, transported to the other islands. And then just be aware of if your animals and your facilities and equipment, um, especially if you are shipping from an area that is currently experiencing some sort of outbreak of some sort of pest or fungus. That sums up our topic of biosecurity. Again, if you ever have any questions related to biosecurity, I highly recommend that you discuss it with your vet, with a state veterinarian, or with one of your county-based extension agents or specialists. We're going to briefly talk about environmental protection and some of the requirements that are in place for shipping livestock. The first is going to be a brief discussion on the Clean Water Act, and that is that shippers need to comply with the Clean Water Act, the US EPA, Hawaii Department of Health Regulations, and the Young Brothers Tariff. Briefly, I wanna to touch on a couple of the major points of the compliance aspects of some of those previously mentioned documents like the Clean Water Act and the Young Brothers Tariff. The first is that animal waste must be removed from the pier and disposed of off-site by the shipper. No water is to be used. Instead, I suggest using a broom and disposing of the debris off-site. There should be no dis discharge into the ocean or at a YB facility. In other words, no water and or animal waste should be put into the ocean or into any aspect of the YB facility, including any form of trash receptacle. The shipper also must provide all of the cleaning equipment. YB will not be providing that. Lastly, shipping devices that are stored at Young Brothers or at the pier must be thoroughly cleaned, and that includes animal waste, bedding, and the feed. One final note that I will make in regards to compliance guidelines is that any questions you have regarding the regulations on shipping or holding devices that have to do with the prevention of livestock waste discharge can be found on the Inner Island Shipping Standards Checklist. And any other questions regarding the Clean Water Act, the Young Brothers Tariff, or anything else related to environmental protection should be directed to the appropriate shipping company such as Young Brothers. And lastly, our fourth section, and certainly not the least important, probably one of the most important aspects of transportation is personnel safety. And this is personnel safety on the ranch and also at the pier. My first recommendation is going to be that anyone who is handling livestock be trained in some sort of quality assurance. That could be beef quality assurance, pork quality assurance, the BQA or BQA transportation, sheep quality assurance, etc. It is really important that you have this training under your belt when you're working with livestock. And these trainings don't just discuss uh, safety of livestock, but they also discuss the personnel safety and how to properly work with and around livestock. 
some of the biggest things to keep in mind whenever you are moving shipping devices and or containers is that you have been trained and are utilizing proper forklift safety when carrying a heavy load. It is important to ensure, as we discussed, the proper function of all of our gates to ensure that there are minimal risks of an animal escaping. Ensure that the animals are calm prior to handling. It's really important that you're not trying to move and handle a flighty, worked up animal. Wait for those animals to calm down before trying to move them. That is important for your safety and then also just the overall animal well-being of livestock being shipped. And then lastly, be sure that you're wearing proper footwear and other PPE whenever you are handling livestock. Specifically to discuss the loaded containers and safety when working with those as well as other types of shipping devices, ensure that the container is locked to the truck's chasis. Remember that containers do have a higher center of gravity compared with shipping containers, and this is because they're oftentimes loaded as double deckers. You have livestock on the top and on the bottom. And so remember that they are at a higher risk for tipping. Also, containers need to be kept on level hard surfaces and the jack legs need to be on a solid surface if you're unhooking a loaded container. And again, my own personal soapbox, be sure if you are transporting cattle that you have been trained in BQA transportation. In terms of other shipping devices, such as box stalls or other shipping pens or trailers, they also need to be kept on level hard surfaces and these devices should be moved carefully and slowly while following uh, best practices for forklift so that you are not damaging the shipping devices that are being used and also so that there is less risk of some sort of accident occurring. And then again, any concerns regarding shipping device integrity or the shipping device guidelines should be addressed prior to transit. I again recommend that you go through that checklist that I've mentioned a couple of times and make sure that all of the boxes are checked prior to even booking some sort of transport. And with that, that concludes uh, the guidelines and recommendations for inner island ocean transport. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to any extension faculty. Uh, your county agent or a specialist. You can also reach out to your commodity organizations such as the Hawaii Pork Industry Association, Hawaii Cattlemen's Council, or the Hawaii Sheep and Goat Association. All of the things I have discussed uh, in terms of links can be found on this slide. And the HCC transportation link that I've provided is the link uh, that will take you to the shipping guidelines checklist and then the uh, guidelines for cattle specifically. And with that, I thank you for your time again and uh, look forward to seeing us all shipping livestock in a safe and efficient manner.